Hi everyone, I'm back. And today I am going to do a reading. And today's reading will be from the book of After the Lua When the Laughter Died Down by Kristen Van Bodegraven. That's me. And um, the book in the uh, forward begins with the, the information that my uh, husband and I had been separated for several months with the intention to divorce. And towards the end of the year and the beginning of, of January, we'd been contemplating a way to change our title from separated with intention to divorce to separated with intention to reconcile. And that is where the book of January begins. So here it is, after the luau when the laughter dies down, January, assault and okonomiyaki. We spent the beginning of January nostalgically reminiscing about our beginning and the value of love and commitment. And by the middle of the month, we'd upgraded from separated to separated with intention to reconcile. His company was having their annual sales meeting on a big island resort, and the meeting fell over the week of my birthday. So my husband extended the proverbial olive branch and invited me along. That he would be at work the entire time and we would never see each other and that his entire office had spent months gossiping about our separation and that he and I were still actually on very tenuous ground did very little to dissuade us from thinking that this was a good idea. Despite all of the evidence to the contrary, I was, of course, convinced that a successful week in a deluxe, all-inclusive resort would be proof positive that my marriage was back on the success track. After all, a failing marriage could hardly breeze through a private oceanfront cottage, deluxe seafood buffets, daily whale watching, and themed cocktail hours with the gang, could it? If we could get through this, we could get through anything. We barely got through it. First, there was the little issue of my arm. I'd torn my bicep at the gym the week before our trip, and the worst of the damage revealed itself during the course of the week. My husband tolerated the first trip to the hospital. It came before the business meeting started, and it was an inconvenience at the worst. It was the second trip that completely unnerved him. My arm swollen, stiff, and unmovable, was causing so much pain, I couldn't even rest it on a pillow. It stuck out at an angle so odd, I could not dress or bathe, and my husband was concerned. Concerned that his co-workers would think that he had broken my arm. Why this was his concern, I'll never know. But it was, in fact, the thing that worried him the most. After a few days of hearing him explain obsessively and then pathetically that he didn't do it, I was somehow transported into his paranoid thinking and, and started myself explaining to people that he hadn't broken my arm without even the benefit of having been asked if he had. The insanity of this didn't hit me until some time later. We didn't exactly hang out with people who had broken their wives' arms. And I mean, it's safe to say we didn't ever hang out with people who broke their wives' arms, not that we knew of. And even if we had, it's just not the kind of thing that you share at a, a business meeting. Why my husband assumed this perception from his coworkers, I'll never know. Perhaps he realized that they understood he had broken me in other ways. Of course, you know, in spite of the arm, there were good times to be had. There were afternoons on the boat watching baby humpbacks and their company team building outrigger races for which the other wives and I, we printed signs and danced around the beach like cheerleaders. And of course there was food and it was unlimited. And for a girl whose primary activities were going to be sitting and eating, it was a dream come true. Lunches comprised of Beautiful spinach, baby lettuces, and locally grown microgreens. Lovely vegetables with eggplants and asparagus, artichoke hearts. Haricove each lightly garnished with delicate flavorings. Udon noodles with garnishes of sesame, fish cake, tamago, nori, tortellini salad with broccoli, ahi sashimi. Eating like this, I was certain, was the key to my marriage success. These meals soothed me the way that morphine for my arm could not. 
After all, if I was eating this well, everything was well with the world, right? A failing person does not have time to revel in a glory that is chilled creamy mint cucumber soup. And I had the time. I was a success. So that's the first reading from After the Luau. When the laughter dies down, hope you enjoy it. And uh, a lot of you have already picked up your copy of the book from Amazon on paperback and Kindle. So for those of you who haven't, don't worry. There are still more, so you can. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Take care.